Well, we are so excited to be at the second edition of Her Speak Up series, and we want to welcome you and thank FSB for being our great sponsor. We would love for you, Tanya, to introduce yourself, uh, tell us who you are, um, all those great things and what you do. Yes, thank you for having me. It's such a privilege to be able to talk about this and all the great work that this hopefully will spread into um, the community and for others to hear about. It's such an important topic um, that we still fight so hard every day to reduce stigma around. So it's a very, very, very much so an honor to be here. Yes. So Tanya Hotchkin, <laughs> um, I am the Vice President of Clinical Services at Teenager Place, so also a therapist a mother, a wife, a sister, all those things that accumulate to who I am and who's sitting here with you today. Yay, I love that. We were just talking, we're both pregnant, and so we're like, we're talking about all the things right now. We're like, this is so great. Um, well, we would love for you to talk about like your background, how you got into your role um, at Tanager Place, all those great things like that. Yes, so background is I have a bachelor's in social work and a minor in family studies. So from a really young age, I always, had this fascination or desire to be engaged in kind of the family system in itself. Um, and so I did a lot of social work for several years and decided that I wanted to go back for my master's. At the time, I really wanted to become a, to become a licensed master's social worker, but um, there were no. Pro I needed to work full time, and there were no programs at the time. And so, what had happened is that the Mount Mercy grad program opened up at the same exact time for a master's in marriage and family therapy. And I say like the universe has interesting ways of leading us to places that we didn't know we needed to be until we were there. And so I engaged in that program and got my master's as a marriage and family therapist and then started practicing therapy right after that at cool. Teenager Place. So I'd, I had been doing another role at Teenager and then moved into that role. Um, I would say probably within two years within my clinical practice there, one of the things that has always like weighed heavy on my heart is how we continue to make an impact into the community, into ways in which access to care is difficult, in a way in which we can use our voice and our advocacy to make a difference. And so one of the huge gaps that I saw was allowing us to go into different systems to offer therapy. Yeah. And so what I saw is that a lot of kids would come to the clinic, but due to a variety of reasons, struggled with attendance or consistency. And we know what research says about needing those things to mm -hmm. make um, headway with in regards to their mental wellness and to cultivate resilience. So I had um, come up with this <laughs> wild idea and said, what if we like do a lot more work around school-based therapy? And so at the time we had we had a different model in which therapists were going into a, like one or two schools one day a week, but I really, really wanted to launch. And our CEO at the time is like a shared visionary. We share souls in that way of like, yeah, if you can imagine it like and you build it, they will come, right? Yeah. And so we just really started to envision that. And I would say that probably launched my career, um, what we call our school-based therapy program. So then I moved up to kind of a supervisor at that time and then throughout the time just took on more in regards to our clinical services at Teenager and leading to where I am today. Um, my name is Teresa graham Minert, and I'm an Associate Executive Director with the Abbey Center for Community Mental Health. Um, what do I do? I do a lot of things. <laughs> it's a it. great gig. I've been there 24 years. Wow. Um, and I, I really enjoy my job. I get to meet really fantastic people, their families, coworkers. Um, my department uh, develops, implements, oversees um, specialty programs for, free, for people with more complex needs. Um, and so individuals who maybe have had a psychiatric hospitalization mm -hmm. or their mental health is such that they um, aren't working full time at that time or those kinds of things. Um, at the Abbey Center we have services especially designed for those individuals um, to try and help them recover and move forward at whatever that life looks like. Yeah. So um, obviously the Abbey Center, Abbey Center works with a lot of different populations, but that's my gig, that's my department, I love it. Tell me more about the Abbey Center that people don't, that don't know. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. So the Abbey Center for Community Mental Health is the designated Community Mental Health Center for Lynn County. 
but we're in other counties as well. Um, we actually serve a seven county catchment area. Cool. And between all of our offices, we see about 11,000 people a year. Wow. Yeah, about 7,000 of them come through our Lynn County office. Most of them are involved with our outpatient services. Sure. So um, mental health medications and therapy. Um, that's our outpatient department. But then we have uh, care coordination services, something called an integrated health home. Cool. Um, and then all the specialty services that are in my department. Yeah. Um, we have really, in the last several years, expanded um, the populations that we serve. Not necessarily um, just serving more people, but serving people better. Cool. Um, by increasing our ex expertise around substance abuse, um, around early onset illnesses, um, really making recovery, um, physical, emotional, um, mental health a priority. Hi everyone, this is Quinn Pettifer with the Gazette and today I am speaking with Peggy Huffert who is the Executive Director for NAMI Iowa, that stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And Peggy is going to be one of our panelists for the upcoming July 22nd Her Speak Up event, which is going to be focused on mental health. Um, the official name of this is Helping Ourselves, Helping Others, and Peggy has agreed to be a panelist. Um, the overall uh, goal for this panel discussion is to talk about the importance of mental health and um, the stigma behind having conversations about mental health and how we are as a society trying um, and continuing to try to encourage people to be open about their mental health questions, um, anxieties, uh, especially as we move into this new phase um, within our pandemic situation where a lot of people are uh, vaccinated, which is a good thing, and starting to return to work, starting to return to some of the things that they have not been a, a part of for well over a year now. And um, some of the real possibilities when it comes to anxieties and um, making sure that we're keeping ourselves in mental check. So thank you for joining me today, Peggy. Appreciate you being on the panel. Appreciate you um, getting uh, getting together to get to know you a little bit better as a panelist. Well, it's so my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we joked around a little off camera. Um, Peggy, you have been a part of many Gazette events um, over the last couple of years. Uh, I, you and I were on a panel for Iowa Ideas um, during one of the first conferences. You continue to be uh, an advisory and great resource um, when it comes to issues of mental health, both at the state level, um, as well as some of the issues that uh, you are hearing from individuals and organizations in your work um, through NAMI. But let's get to know you a little bit more. Um, can you start off with just a little bit about yourself, your background and where you can come from? Sure. You bet. Well, first of all, I want to thank the Gazette for doing this. Um, you're doing great work. And I love the Iowa Ideas Conference. Uh, some friends of mine uh, were telling me about it and they said, you have to get connected to this. You have to be involved. And then I got asked to be part of it and uh, I've been being part of it ever since. So uh, we bring you in and then we never take you out. You're an advisory <laughs> council member. You're <laughs> Well, kudos to the Gazette because uh, it's just really important stuff for our state. Oh, well, thank you. So uh, I actually grew up in Wisconsin and as South Central Wisconsin, uh, right between Milwaukee and Madison. I got out to Iowa to go to Drake University. I studied journalism. I was going to be uh, the next Woodward or Bernstein uh, because I was a child of the Watergate era. Yep. But um, I met a guy and uh, ended up getting married and staying here in the Des Moines area. Uh, I was a working journalist, uh, worked for the Des Moines uh, Tribune and the Associated Press for a few years before I got into nonprofit work uh, as a, a communications person. And I've uh, been in nonprofits ever since, um, been a communications director. I've been a government relations director uh, for the American Cancer Society, helped to pass the Smoke Free Air Act. I've been a fundraiser um, for different organizations. Uh, and I've been an executive director and I've been the executive director of NAMI Iowa for the last little over five years. Mm -hmm. 